Welcome back to Blue Book. Today we are going to make a simple Japanese dumpling gyoza. Let's get started. So to a bowl I'm going to add 500 grams of all-purpose flour followed by 10 grams of sea salt. Now give that a little mix together and then and 300 grams of boiling hot water. Now I'm going to knead that for around 3 to 4 minutes adding my water quite slowly. Now boiling water is a must here. By adding hot water to the dough, we're actually denaturing the proteins. This means we get less gluten development. And we don't get that really stretchy dough that you get with like a cold water bread sort of a dough. So this is ideal for creating a dough that doesn't bounce back when rolling it out. Okay, now we want to take the dough, smooth it over a little bit and put a tea towel over it and set it aside to rest. Then I'm going to take one half an apple cabbage and I'm going to thinly slice it and then make sure we really dice that up well. We're going to add a good chunk of salt to that and then we're going to just really squish it between our hands and we're really trying to incorporate the salt here to get all the water out of the cabbage. Now I'm going to set that to the side and then I'm going to slice four to five spring onions really thinly and then to my stand mixer I have added 500 grams of pork along with 15 grams of soy sauce, 15 grams of sesame seed oil and 15 grams of cornstarch and to that I'm going to add my spring onions along with three cloves of garlic and just a knob of ginger. Now I'm just going to get some anger out and squeeze that water out before adding that to my mixture. And then I'm going to mix that for another five to six minutes. Now you don't want to over mix this in case it heats up too much but basically we're looking for really beautiful strands of meat. That's all the protein starting to align itself and making a more cohesive filling. Okay, so we're going to get our dough out and we're going to generously flour it. And then we're going to take our thumbs and we're going to make a hole in the center. And we're going to move our hands around to really stretch it out and make a really large donut. Now we're going to cut this in half into two pieces and just roll back and forth, applying pressure in the middle making sure we get a nice even roll until it's around one inch in diameter. Now I'm going to cut my dough into 25 to 30 gram pieces and don't worry it really doesn't have to be perfect for this. Now I'm going to lay my dough down and I'm going to press it down with my palm. I'm then going to cover that with a tea towel to make sure they don't dry out. Now I'm going to use one of these really small rolling pins and I just found this one in the local hardware store. And I'm going to place the dough on a bench and I'm going to hold one edge with my non-dominant hand. And using the rolling pin I'm going to roll back and forth applying pressure as I roll downwards. Now that's going to ensure we get a really good thin edge to our dough and a nice thicker middle part. And what that does is when we come to folding it that layer that doubles up won't create a really gummy part that will just be really undercooked. Now as I roll each one out, you can see I actually rotate the dough around with my non-dominant hand just to really make sure we get a nice even circle. Well as even as you know I can do it, I'm sure some of you will be far better at this than me. Now if you're like me and you can't get really perfect circles out of this, feel free to just use a cookie cutter to just get a really nice circle there. Okay, and then just keep practicing that, applying pressure going downwards, and you know you're at the right level when it just becomes slightly translucent. Now onto the difficult part. We're gonna take our wrappers in your non-dominant hand, and using a teaspoon of our mixture, we're gonna place that in the center, and we're going to put a little bit of water around the outside, and that's gonna help the sides of the dough stick. Now I'm gonna fold this in half, Pressing into the center, I'm going to use my thumb and my index finger to plate towards the center. 
And then once you've done three pleats, do the other side, just folding inwards to the center. And then look at that, your first gyoza done. Okay, so let's just watch that really slowly. I'm gonna just move my index finger and my thumb and I'm gonna move over that top part of dough and I'm gonna squish it down to the back side. Over and press down, over and press down. And we want to do that for three plates on one side and then turn it over and do it again. There we go, a really nice looking dumpling. Okay, then after that, put on a TV show, listen to some music, get into the groove and just bang out these gyozas. Okay, and I've made the most simple dipping sauce, just out of soy sauce, mirin, and rice wine vinegar. Recipes in the description below. Now set a pan over a medium heat with some neutral oil, and you want to place your gyoza into the pan for around three minutes. Now you should start to see them go a beautiful golden brown. Now once that's complete, I'm gonna add around one quarter of a cup of water and I'm gonna cook that until the water has completely evaporated, around four minutes. Now look at that, after four minutes, fantastic crispy gyoza made from scratch. Now I'm gonna just finish that off with a very simple homemade chili oil, just to add a little bit of color and just a little bit of spice. Now to be honest guys, I already know this is gonna be amazing. Crispy bottom, soft dough, a really juicy pork filling. Honestly, what could be better? I will see everyone next time. Have a darn good week.